Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as The Freemans. And this episode is about this pattern that you have. I don't feel loved. Well, I don't feel respected. The battle for love and respect. Yeah, you're going to resonate with a lot throughout this, and you're going to see different places that this shows up in your relationship. So, Aaron, where does this come from? Well, there's a key underlying cycle that happens in every relationship, and it is one of the main patterns that cause conflicts. Now, this principle we want to dive into is written in a book called Love and Respect by Emerson Egritz, and it's very insightful. It's a powerful principle and it's very simple. Now, personally, I listened to like the first three chapters. We were flying to, I think Maui it was. Mm -hmm. I listened to it on 1.5 speed, got to the third chapter and pretty much was like, I got the point. (laughs) And also I wanted to get right to like putting this into action because you probably don't realize this is what's happening. And it was great because you listened to it even after in so many coaching sessions, we have watched this play out, Mm -hmm. right? Like we would take couples through different communication exercises, et cetera. And a lot of times it would come down to these two things, the statements, well, I don't feel loved. And then the other person, I don't feel respected. And then when we saw a book that was like correlated with it, we were like proof of Mm -hmm. exactly what we're hearing and where it comes from. Now, before we get into the specifics of this and you guys are really going to resonate we've got a surprise for you podcast listeners yeah you are the first to hear about something we're not even going to share about this publicly for a little bit but you get the first opportunity to either text or email us your interest in this so We do a lot of private coaching and we love it, but there's something really powerful about doing things as a group. You hear from other experiences, you get more ahas because of learning and hearing from other people and you get more accountability. It's not just us, it's the other couples kind of holding you accountable to what you're committed to. So we are going to be leading the new, it's the new improved version 3.0 couples experience. And it's going to be unique in that we're also going to bring in a couple other guest experts, especially, oh my gosh, you're going to love this expert on sex and intimacy. Yep, we are going there. you've been listening, it's the one that we took the workshop with in Hawaii. Yes. So this is going to be for you, the whole journey, if you want to spice things up right? You want to spice things up in your relationship. You want to get rid of old junk holding you back. And of course, communication is just something that we're always going to improve because that's the big area that couples are wanting to work on. So the key areas of this group program, communication and conflict, of course, but also sex and intimacy from a completely new angle. Like you guys normally would have to go do private coaching with her, which is a really amazing journey and a a hefty investment. You're going to get to learn that in this, some new sex and intimacy dynamics and coming at it from a unique angle. We know a lot of you, that's an area that you're working on. Don't worry, you're not gonna have to like get too graphic or share too private in that. You're gonna be just led through these experiences. So the very brief overview, and that's where again, you wanna reach out to learn more and talk to us, is that you're gonna be taken through five live group workshops and coaching sessions covering those topics that we've already covered. And we are going to provide support in between. So there's going to be calls where just the men are connecting, just the women are connecting. And you know what's powerful about that is you get a safe space to kind of talk to other people who are like you about your experience with things. And so, yes, you get to be understood, but you also have other people challenge you a little bit like, hey, I get your point and here's, you know, a different way you could handle that. So group accountability is super transformative. Again, there's more details to this, but if this is something that's of interest to you, go ahead and either text or email us your interest before we even announce it. The email is connect at newpowercouples.com and then the text would be 602-321-5652. Two, and we will connect further with you. You get to be the first to apply for this. And yes, I'm personally so excited to get into this type of program with you all. So as Jocelyn said, message us. We can give you much more details on the time and everything involved. But let's get back to love and respect. So with love and respect in a relationship, yes, both partners need to feel love and respect. Now, linking to this book, 
there is some data and some research that was done that shows on a gender level, women tend to need a bit more love while men need more respect. Mm -hmm. So that really brings us into the cycle. So let me paint this picture and honestly really think about how this could be the underlying cycle for you in one of the conflicts you're having. And we know while we're going through the cycle that we are generalizing that this is a heterosexual couple, right? So this is a bit of a generalization and just place yourself in whatever kind of partnership you're in. Yeah, and you could probably get to the place where you say masculine and feminine, Mm -hmm. where maybe more of a feminine person is going to need to feel more love, more masculine driven person, more respect. Great point. We don't have any data on that, but (laughs) extrapolating from this book, which I think is, I can't remember, a a bit older. But anyway, Mm -hmm. here's the cycle that happens. The feminine partner can feel as if they're not getting as much love. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, maybe it's even more evident. Like you could actually say not at all. Okay, so that's the feeling. And this creates what we refer to in our book then as a lower love account. Now, in this state, when you're in a lower love account, which would be for anyone, you can feel more reactive, less connected, And then that drives you to say or do something that might be more critical to the other person. Mm -hmm. It might sound like feedback. You make a remark. It's sharp. Mm -hmm. It's kind of passive. You know, like whatever it is, not like super intentional, but it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be subtle. Mm -hmm. Okay. The cycle then continues with the masculine partner. When that tank is also a little bit lower, and I'm saying that for this specific reason we'll come back to later, we'll take that personally, maybe as a personal attack, and we'll feel disrespected. Mm -hmm. The cycle spirals. (laughs) When he feels disrespected, he pulls back. For example, I can't even tell you how many times, hence why we did a podcast on it recently, Defensiveness. Mm-hmm. And I think the defensiveness, the shutting down, the pulling back energetically happens with masculine and more so male partners. Mm-hmm. And so that is from this feeling of being disrespected. So when that partner feels that disrespect, what else is really going to happen except they show less love? Mm. And whether that's through withholding affection, whether it's less thoughtful actions, kind of being solo, being on their own, or just in less engagement, mm-hmm. right? Less questions. And most feminine partners can feel sort of that pullback. Oh, you could even say energetically. Definitely feel it. Now the trap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You had the cycle that started, the cycle continues, the cycle spiraled. Now the trap with less love actually being shown and expressed then the feminine partner becomes more critical. And to be honest, this could be the first time it's more intentional or conscious because the first one could be, oh, it wasn't their intent, but it could be taken as disrespect. Mm -hmm. Then the male partner, oh, pulls back love. Now the feminine partner is feeling less love Mm -hmm. and now becomes more reactive, maybe more verbal and continues the disrespect cycle. Mm, It's so interesting because I can see even when you're explaining that times where this has happened for us. Now, thankfully, because we do this work and we, you know, even observe things with couples so much, we catch it pretty quick. But we talk to a lot of couples where they're weeks into this, they're months into this. And of course, there's some extreme examples where they're years into this. But wherever you are, like, just even think, like, how long have we felt like we've been in this cycle? Well, I almost would say, because it's not, like, constant. I guess that was the first thing Mm -hmm. that was there for me. It's not like this is happening 100% of your time together. Uh, So you're going to have reprieves. Mm -hmm. But if you do feel like the same topic is coming up over and over again, you do feel that low love account. It's just kind of This is the cycle. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. totally. Now, let me just say real quick, I know you have some examples. It's hard to get out of this cycle because your conversations are about the topic and the subject at hand. Mm. Or, as many of you are going to relate to this, 
If not the particular subject, then you get trapped in the comments that were made in the actions. Well, you said this, you said that with this kind of tone, or it could be about the expression or a complaint about the lack of thoughtfulness or actions. You haven't been initiating, you haven't been showing me affection. So it's either about the topic or it's about the action, the comments, the what's perceived as disrespect or what's perceived as not being loving. So when you say that, Aaron, what you mean is a lot of couples don't realize that they need to dig deeper into what's missing for each of them, Mm -hmm. right? So you might not realize that what's driving your action is not feeling loved and the other person not feeling respected. So you think it's just about the dishes, yeah, you know, or you think it's just about not having a date night. Or it's about how they spoke to you. Mm -hmm. It's about the attitude. Yes. It's about the tone of voice. And that's where it's really powerful on the sessions that we do with couples because we listen, right? And because we're not involved in the situation emotionally, we can objectively listen to what's going on and we'll go, hey, if you really take that deeper, a couple of layers deeper, what you're really saying is blank. You know, I don't feel loved. I don't feel respected. But because you're in it and you're feeling the emotion and your amygdala is hijacked and you're not really seeing things kind of just simple, right? Like you really have the emotion added in, you fixate on, like you said, the topic or the detail. So here's like an example of a pattern we're seeing recently. Did you want me to give an example now, Aaron? Uh, yes. Let me just finish this out. Mm-hmm. So it's getting expressed the, the not feeling love or feeling disrespected. It's getting expressed as a complaint. And I just wanted to link, we did a web class last week. This is not asserting yourself. Mm-hmm. verbalizing your complaint or just verbally accosting <laughs> your mm-hmm. partner is not assertiveness. Then you never get to the real point of that. The feminine partner is not feeling loved and the masculine partner is not feeling respected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. So that's what you were going there. Just wanted to highlight that. That's why you get stuck in this trap. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a couple examples that have been showing up recently and of course keeping information private. First one is some version of the feminine partner saying like, you don't make enough time for me. You seem busy. You seem distracted. We haven't gone on a date night in a while. You don't seem to be like pursuing intimacy with me, right? So those are some of the ways they're saying it. And then what it comes down to is she's saying, I don't feel loved, Mm -hmm. which another way they would say it is like, I don't feel as though you like want me, desire me. Mm -hmm. That's another big way they can say it. Then the the masculine partner is saying, really? Well, all you do is criticize me. (laughs) You're telling me all the time that the way I did the dishes wrong doesn't work. You know, the socks are on the floor. Or how many times have I heard this? You've already said this to me before. Why do you keep bringing up the past? Why do you keep saying the same thing? Why are you always criticizing me? Exactly. And so he's really saying, hey, I don't feel respected. And so now they're at this place where neither of them are getting what they want, the quality time, the respect. And there's just kind of this tense, cold energy a little bit between them. And Mm -hmm. a big way that this manifests is less intimacy, especially physical, right? Because you're not drawn to each other. You're kind of repelling each other is the way I like to think about it. Hence, another reason you want to be a part of the group program we're going to be doing. Another one, and this is specific, but it's interestingly been showing up with several people that we've been talking to. First one is feminine partners feeling not desired, Mm -hmm. not wanted. Again, intimacy not being initiated. They're feeling more self-conscious. They feel like their partner is, you know, looking at others. Mm -hmm. Then the feminine Mm -hmm. partner is asking more questions. Where are you? Who are you looking at? Who are you texting? Um, You know, just more questioning. So then again, masculine partner feels not respected, not trusted. I'm glad you said that. We might have to do a deeper dive sometime later on maybe the difference, if there is, between trust and respect. But in this case, let's just, it's so close. Mm -hmm. When all that questioning and doubt is there and those comments keep happening, the masculine partners don't feel trust. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel trusted, I mean, I certainly don't feel respected. 
True. Right. So again, I'm not sure if we've flushed out the difference between trust and respect yet, but they definitely go hand in hand. Oh yeah. They're definitely related. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great way that you explained it. And so again, cycle goes down the, you know, partners like, okay, fine. If you're going to be questioning me all the time, this isn't like really what I want. And they kind of push away energetically Mm -hmm. and the spiral continues. Less love. Mm -hmm. So as soon when I don't feel, I'm just saying me, Mm -hmm. I don't feel trusted or respected is that having me lean in? Mm. I mean, is that, I mean, we want you to be able to, but by default, are you going to lean in? Does that feel like a traction energy? Yeah. Are you pulling your partner in? No, you're doing the opposite. It's like, let me disengage from this. Exactly. And let I, me pull away my energy, my attention, my focus, my comments. And so whether, I just want to say this, whether this whole cycle actually started from actions or statements that were Mm -hmm. disrespectful or not loving by the time you get here now they actually are disrespectful and Mm -hmm. there's love missing well because you also have justification now for your actions Mm -hmm. you know whether it's the i don't feel respected so i'm justified in kind of retreating and not being as engaged because you're doing this this and this so all the focus becomes on the other partner Mm -hmm. oh yeah right and then or the i'm not feeling loved so i'm justified in asking questions and kind of pointing out where you're not doing what you're supposed to But I could be, and this is where we're going to lead into the actions, right? Is I could actually be aware of how are my actions making my partner feel? And if I understand that if we simplify and go deeper layer, deeper layer, deeper layer, and again, this is kind of a simplifying a bigger emotional concept. Oh, if my actions aren't having my partner respect, feel respected, of course they're doing what they're doing. Hmm. So I need to become aware of how my actions are making my partner feel and vice versa. Hmm. And that's actually the action we want you to take. Mm-hmm. So we want you to think of a cycle, a pattern, a conflict that has been happening and really frame it inside of this. Mm-hmm. So I also want to link to our previous episode that was so good about the three sources of arguments and the three methods. Mm-hmm. Because where this falls in, in action step number one for you, you have to identify that this cycle is happening for yourself. And rather than getting caught at the surface level, either the subject or then blame, Mm -hmm. which is the method, (laughs) blaming the other partner saying, well, you're not showing me love Mm -hmm. and you're not respecting me. You got to pull it back and realize that the source is conflicting or missing value yeah so we talked about that so the source of arguments from last episode logic value and choice but in this case what we're talking about is the value that the feminine partner has on love and the value that the masculine partner has on respect Mm -hmm. that's what's missing and that is really what is at odds you need to pause and identify we're in an argument it's about value And my partner must not be feeling loved. My partner must not be feeling respected. Exactly. I think that's a huge, and I'm glad you linked to that episode. So once you are saying, okay, Freemans, I hear this. I'm identifying the cycle. I see my part in the cycle. Mm -hmm. Now is to express what you do want to Mm -hmm. your partner. Now, we're not suggesting that you go to them and be like, I need more respect. (laughs) You need to respect me more, right? (laughs) Because the other partner might be like, um, but I am right. Or you need to show more love. And so this isn't like now, it's going to come off as blame. Exactly. Yeah. So ideally you both would listen to this episode, hear it from us because we're not pointing fingers at either one of you and then be able to discuss together. Oh, okay. How exactly is it that we feel we're missing love and respect? Like what are some of the behaviors that have partner a feel not respected? What are some of the behaviors that have uh, partner B not feel loved, but then what's the reverse of that? Mm-hmm. And we talked about that on the web class. We're very good at identifying what we don't want, but mm-hmm. you got to flip it and say, okay, what is it I do want? What actions make me feel loved? What yeah. actions make me feel respected and share those with each other? Yeah. What I like more of. Yes. And notice how you're not just complaining to your partner about what you feel is missing. Mm-hmm. And I think I miss said this. So let me go back again okay. from the last episode. 
Yeah, I think I did put these out of order. So the sources are blame, mm. value, and choice. Okay. So again, noticing that where you are is the value of love and respect. Mm -hmm. You have to notice that. The methods then are logic, emotion, and character. Okay. I think I switched the first two. Yeah. That's why you go listen to the last episode for that principle. Mm -hmm. But we hope that this episode really is informing If I could say you. one more thing. Mm -hmm. I just realized this. From that level one, mm -hmm. one partner is not feeling, and it could be a part of a perception, love or respect, then they either unconsciously pull back or make a side comment. It's not as intentional, but by the time you get to that second layer, as I mentioned just a few minutes earlier, you kind of actually are doing the actions and saying things that are less loving mm -hmm. and not respectful. Yeah. If to tie, I like to tie these two together. What happens in there at some point is you go to their character. Ooh. And you really need to notice when you get to that place from the negative side of character, you're deep. Mm -hmm. You know, you you went beyond the value, love and respect, and then now you went to really attacking their character. You just have like I just am seeing these levels. Mm -hmm. Love and respect as being value, getting you down into being justified, and then going to the character. Yeah, now you're deep. You need some five R's. You really need some five R's. <laughs> the five R's. R's to repair from mm. an argument, which is in our book, and we have a web class on that. But again, there's a lot here. We want you to just even focus on identifying the cycle, mm -hmm. taking ownership for the part you play in this. Again, you can point the finger and blame all day long at their actions, but you only have control over it yourself. And so we hope that this was informative and kind of gave you a different angle at understanding what you're needing and what your partner is needing. We're excited to hear how your discussions go with love and respect. And this is also why you're going to love to go deeper with us not only us, but also the other couples mm. participating in yeah. the live couples experience group journey, right? Which again is going to have live workshops that are online. So this isn't just Arizona based and coaching group accountability. So again, if that is of interest to you, go ahead and send us a message, um, email or text 602-321-5652 is the text number. And then email is connect at newpowercouples.com. We can't wait to share more details. They could reach out via Instagram too, right? Instagram, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. Meet underscore the Freemans. Meet the Freemans. Well, everyone, we love you. We're so grateful that you listen. And we will talk to you all on the next episode. 